Hello, I'm Debbie Kitterman, and welcome to Dare to Hear the Podcast, where we equip you and challenge you to dare to hear the voice of God. Well, I did tell you the last time I had Robert Hodgkin on that he is one of my favorite guests. And so I hope by now you believe me because he is back with me again. But I'm really excited about what we're going to talk about this time because you have a book called 31 Decrees um, for Men. It's a blessing for men. And so if you've missed any of the other episodes, you need to go back. Robert is such a great um, teacher. He empowers you. He equips you in even just the short amount of time that we're on the podcast. He's got several resources, which will tell you how to connect with him at the end of this podcast. But let me tell you a little bit about who he is. And then we're going to jump right in, Robert, and we're going to talk about 31 Decrees of Blessing for Men. So Robert Hodgkin is the founder of Men on the Frontline and is a core leader in Patricia King Ministries. He hosts the Heroes of Rod broadcast and is a regular guest and co-host on God's TV Supernatural Live. His ministry and media inspire believers to grab a hold of the finished work of the cross and walk in the fullness of their authority as kingdom agents of impact. I love that, by the way, and I've never said this on any of the episodes that we've recorded together, but I am all about being a kingdom agent. And I use that phrasing all the time. And Robert, I even had this thing that um, was like mission possible, not mission impossible, where I would challenge people because that's like my thing, right? I'm going to challenge you. Um, and so I love that, 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 and you do every time I've had you on the podcast, you have always encouraged and equipped us to really walk in our kingdom authority and be agents of impact. So thank you for that. Oh man, that means a lot to me. I love that. I've, I love the Joshua call to lead the people of God into all that they've been given through Christ. You know, he is our promised land and we're to be operating in that authority and that power, not because we have to, but because we get to. And I really appreciate your ministry and how you do challenge us to do that. And I appreciate our friendship and I love our conversation. So it's good to be back with you. Ah, thanks, Phil. I'm so excited. I'm sure there's going to be many other conversations in the future, but for now, we're going to tackle this one. And I think it's very timely too, because Father's Day is coming up and, you know, you never know what, what do you get the dad or the father or your son or that they always have so many things right here, 31 decrees of blessings for men. And so why did you write this book? You know, one of the biggest reasons I wrote the, this book, uh, Debbie, was because of the assault on men in the spirit. And, you know, I want to be careful because we never want to take on a victim mentality, but we should be aware of what the enemy's doing. And it was very obvious the last several years there's been this massive assault on men, right down to even ridiculous things like you'd read articles every once in a while, how college campuses would want to outlaw the word man. Or, you know, you look in most of culture, not all of culture, but most of culture and the the man or the father is usually the butt of every joke and made to be ridiculous. And look, again, never, never give place to offense because of that stuff, but be aware of what the enemy's doing. And I felt like God stirred my heart with, especially with our men on the front lines ministry, to put out a book that would help remind men who they truly are, not even address, because I've found with so much of this stuff, it's not worth the energy to yell back at those lying voices. What powerful is to release truth. You don't fight darkness with more darkness. You defeat darkness by releasing light. We see that in Genesis 1-3. So that's what this book is. It's a devotional, 31 days devotional. So you can use it every day of the month, right? And every single chapter has a scriptural truth to show men as sons of God who they are and what they have. Then there's a devotion to unpack that revelation. So they go, oh, I get it. But then what's cool is there's 10 decrees at the end of every devotion to come into agreement with that truth, release scripture on that truth to frame that blessing, that gift, that empowerment in their life so they can step into it because men are needed since day six. God has created man in his image, male and female. Every one of our Christian sisters is needed. Every one of our our men is needed. And we've got to be honoring and empowering and reminding men and women who they are in Christ and how necessary they are. That's what this book does for men. Yeah, it it really is powerful. I'm not a man, obviously, but I read the book and I there. Well, I have my three favorite ones um, because I, I thought they were unique. 
the other ones I was like, oh, those make sense. But I like those. So we'll, so we'll talk about those in a minute. But before we talk about the book, could you kind of explain what Men on the Front Lines is? Because I think every time I've introduced you, I've introduced that. And I was like, I know what it is, but I don't know if my viewers and listeners know what Men on the Front Line is. And I think it's a great resource for men. So unpack that a little bit and then I'll ask you some questions. Yeah, years ago, the Lord invited me to add a ministry to my ministries, and it was men on the front lines. And um, he really shared with me what I liked about it is I got to be honest, Debbie, in my prayer chair, when he was talking to me, I thought, Lord, do we really need another men's ministry? And he said, yes. And and he gave me a specific focus about what on the men on the front lines is. And he was very clear to me, and I already touched on it. He said, I want the entire focus of men on the front lines for you to be reminding men who they truly are, because I'm going to put an Enoch mantle on this ministry. And I was like, what do you mean? We're just going to ascend to heaven. And he just reminded me of the scripture, Enoch walked so closely with God, he was not. And he said, no, what I mean by the Enoch mantle is, is you remind men who they are in me, with me, and for me, everything they're not is going to fall away. So I'll connect you with ministries that can help men address certain issues. Like, you know, the classic one, pornography. That's not a guy I meet that doesn't know that pornography is not an issue or something to be avoided or something to be said free from. But there's also been many guys I've met who said, yeah, I heard about your ministry. I really, I really like Robert Hodgkin ministries. I probably need a men's ministry, but I'm just, I don't want to come to another meeting about getting set free from porn. And I was like, you know what? I actually think it's really important. If you're wrestling with it, we can connect you with great ministries, but that's not what we do. What we do is remind you who you are. We help you operate in the certainty of sonship. And we highlight to you everything God has blessed you with in that certainty of sonship to be the man, the husband, the friend, the worker, the leader, the whatever you are in Christ, all that other stuff, the more you're reminded who you truly are, the easier it is to let go of who you're truly not. So men on the front lines is a hundred percent devoted to reminding men who they are and empowering them to walk in it. That other stuff we have seen over the years, it just falls away. Yeah, it's so good. And and in the first introduction chapter, which you stole like my first five questions. So, but that's okay. But you use one of my favorite verses. I love Romans chapter eight is like my all time chapter in the Bible, but I love the one about creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. Like I, what, right away I'm reading that. I'm like, I know I'm not a man, but I can't wait to read the rest of this. <laughs> and it, it really is good. Now you um, did say that there are 10 decrees at the end of every chapter. So there's one for every day in the month and there's these decrees, but I wanted to like, why is a decree um, important and what exactly is it? Yeah, a great question. A decree is just a scriptural truth that you open your mouth and you declare in your authority in Christ. And the way it works, it talks about in what is it? Hebrews 11, three, I think it is how the visible world is framed by the invisible world. And the whole world is framed by the word of God. What we see in Genesis one, uh, ver Genesis one verses one through 25, how God brings forth all of creation by speaking the word. Right. And then in verses 26 through 28, he puts us in places as dominion stewards. And I won't unpack the whole thing, but years ago, he took me into an encounter with him where he actually brought me into Genesis one and showed me how that all worked and highlighted to me that one of the main ways we operate is dominion stewards in the earth on his behalf. Kingdom agents of impact is through the power of decree that those first 25 verses is not just a history lesson and, and beautiful poem revealing how God brought forth creation. It's him showing us how we're made in his image and how he brought forth creations. One of the main ways we steward it. So one of the main ways we frame form and inform our life is by releasing the word of God, which never returns void, always produces fruit. And, 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 uh, um, oh wait, I just went blank. It always produces fruit, never returns void. And accomplishes everything it's sent forth to do. Sorry, it's been a long day. I went it's blank okay. for a second. And when we make a decree, a scripture-based decree, we are sending forth the word of God. So we're now framing, forming, and informing our life with that truth. And when we make a decree, angels are released to actually perform that word. So not only are we releasing the word, but heaven is released to form that in our lives so we can step into it. So again, that's why we start with a scripture. 
We start with eternal truth. We start with biblical truth, the word of God saying, this is who you are and what you have as my son. Then there's a uh, devotion to unpack that. And I usually share stories from my own life or something I've seen to prove that we really have this and how easy it is to step into it. And then there's the 10 decrees to form that in our life so we can step out into it. Yeah. And you cover, well, 31 topics, <laughs> 31 topics, because it's 31 decrees of blessing for men. But you cover topics like rest and authority and God's favor. Like, how did you decide what topics to cover? Because you only had 31. So how did you boil it down? Like, I actually, and I mean this, I sat with Holy Spirit. I started with a list that came to mind. And then I sat with Holy Spirit and said, what do you want to speak to your sons? Because it's 31 decrees of blessing for men. So every single one of these devotions and chapters is something God wanted to highlight. He's blessed his sons worth, Mm -hmm. his sons with as difference makers and solution bringers on behalf of his kingdom in the earth. So Holy Spirit and I work together to come up with the topic of 31 decrees. I actually have a folder of ones I never used because in my own zeal and excitement, I started on certain ones and Holy Spirit was like, that's good, but I want to highlight this one. And then there were ones that I was like, oh, okay, interesting. And then he unpacked it for me. And I was like, wow, God, that's powerful. I use this book regularly. I love yeah. this. I, maybe you're not supposed to say this, but I read and pray through and decree <laughs> from my own devotional No, <laughs> because it's really good. his because, his because it's, it's scripture. It's truth. Yeah. There's power in that. And if there's anything that I've learned out of the other times you joined me on the podcast, it's so important that we declare and decree and that we know the word of God so that we can take our rightful place and really be kingdom agents. And it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's like a a leathery bound and it's like a good gift edition people. So get it for graduation gifts too. Like, actually, I just thought of that. Like not just father's day, but graduation is coming up too. So all the men in your life, they need one of these, whether they're a father or not. Um, Okay. So when I was reading through, because I was like, Oh yeah, I can see why. Yeah. That would be a good blessing. That'd be a good blessing. But the first one that caught my attention was um, heroic holiness. And so usually I read a book from cover to cover, but this time I didn't do that. And I was like looking through the thing. I was like, oh, I want to see what that one's about. And so like I scrolled over there and of course it has Romans 8, 19 about all Mm -hmm. creation and being glorious sons, mature sons. You, so you talk about the glorious sons and mature sons and can just kind of unpack that just a little bit to give them a, a glimpse of what they can get when they get this book. Yeah, sure. Romans 8, 19, as you've said, um, uh, uh, declares that all of creation is groaning for the revealing of the sons of God. There's four different words for sons in Greek. The one that God used, uh, had the apostle Paul use, there is huios, and it means mature son. And there's a whole big teaching on that that I won't go into. But what's really important is creation is groaning. Creation is more aware of what we carry as sons of God than we tend to be. And they're groaning for us to stay step into that place of maturity because we truly are kingdom agents of impact when we do. Now, what's interesting is Hebrews 514, especially in my old 96 new living, which is the one I cite in this devotional makes it clear what maturity is. It says the mature ones recognize the difference between right and wrong and choose to obey. That's heroic holiness. When you choose to obey the will, the word and the ways of God, not for relationship, not to get something thing you don't have, but to operate in the fullness of what you have been given. God declared over the son, Christ Jesus, and sent him out into the earth with this. Behold, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. A declaration of love, acceptance, and identity, identity, the declaration of the certainty of sonship. Well, Jesus says in two different places in the gospels that as he was sent, so also are we. And every man needs to understand that as a son of God, we are sent out into the earth, just as Jesus was, with a revelation of the certainty of sonship, with a revelation of identity, love, value, and worth. So we never have to operate for 
that. We operate from that. And when we choose to obey the will, the word, and the way of our God, because it's our true character and nature now in Christ, it has radical impact in the earth. Romans 5, 15 through 19 makes it clear the power a son has when they obey or disobey. It says, because the first son, Adam, chose to disobey, unrighteousness entered the earth. Now catch this. Debbie, you read this, so you know it. It doesn't say he was made unrighteous. He was, but because Adam chose to disobey, he just wasn't made unrighteous. Unrighteousness entered the earth. It rippled throughout all creation. So we need to catch when we are agents of unholiness, of wickedness, of darkness, that unholiness, that wickedness, that darkness ripples throughout creation. That's a heavy thing. But here's the deal. If you have been, the blood of Jesus works. It's brilliant. Plead the blood of Jesus, declare the blood of Jesus, cancel all that unrighteousness, bring it into alignment with his truth, and it's done. But here's what's exciting. It then says, because Christ Jesus chose to obey, righteousness was made available to all. Not he was made righteous, he already was, but because he chose on our behalf, the son of God became the son of man, so every son of man could become a son of God. And of course, that includes his daughters too. But what we've got to catch is Jesus chose to obey in relationship, not for it. And when he did that, righteousness was released to all creation. That's radical righteousness. That's heroic holiness. When we choose to obey in relationship, when we get that from the revelation of identity comes the realization of opportunity, and men, we understand that as mature sons, we can choose to obey, not to get something we don't have, but to operate in the fullness of what we've been given and what when, who we are. It ripples throughout all creation. It makes a radical difference. Heroic holiness is a global ministry available to every believer. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. And and I was like, I was like, ooh, it's for men, but I'm reading it and I'm loving it. I'm like, and I'm thinking in my mind, wait, are you gonna do one for women? And can you put that one in there and have the decrease? Because I mean, I could do the work, I guess. I could do this, I could do the work when I my husband has it and I could make my own decrees for women. But I was like, huh, oh, this is so good. So good. Robert. We do so have good. one for women, just so you know. Good. That Patricia Good. King, who I'm one of the, I'm, I'm part yes. of her ministry. She wrote one for women. I wrote one for men. So I we have it. it. Perfect. Great. So women, you can go do that for yourself too. Okay. So the other one that I really loved was, um, I like that you do the, the blessed to be husband, but the other one that was like my favorite at the top of the list was blessed to champion women. Yes. And that was so good. My husband is a great, like when we pastored, like people were like, your, your, your husband's okay that you go and travel and minister and speak. And you, like, you go out of the country with Adam. I'm like, yeah, he champions me. And they're like, yeah, they didn't really get it till we were senior pastors. And then most of the people on our staff, Robert were women ministers and people were like, how, how does he do that? Why do not other people do that? This is so important. So talk to me a little bit about this. Cause you reference so many women, um, in relation to Jesus's ministry, but I just thought I want to end today's podcast with this and then, yeah. One of the core values, because everything we do in Robert Hodgkin Ministries and Men on the Front Lines, in Patricia King Ministries, Michelle Burkett is one of our itinerants out of Michelle, uh, Patricia King Ministries as well. So her ministry, everything we do, we build on kingdom values. So when I started, when God had me start Men on the Front Lines, the first thing I did was sit with him and say, Lord, what are going to be the core foundational kingdom values of Men on the Front Lines? And one of the ones he gave me was Men on the Front Lines champion women. Mm -hmm. And so this is very near and dear to me because I was raised up in ministry by Patricia King and her husband, Ron, but mm -hmm. Ron is like your husband. He is always champion and cheered on Patricia. He has always uh, uh, blessed her prophetic and apostolic gifting and championed her in it while he served behind the scenes, which he's called to do. And one of the things being raised up by a woman in ministry, you hear all the stuff, you know, and people always cite what Paul says to Timothy. And once you understand the context of that, it becomes very clear. And then even more than that, because we can get into de unnecessary debates about context. What is more important is to realize the same Apostle Paul who said that to Timothy in the context of his brand new ministry, that many women had been saved out of the, the Diana cult. And that's why he was sharing that for that 
moment. Mm -hmm. The same Paul, even if you disagree with that context, you have every right to, you have to notice that the same Paul is championing women and asking the church to accept them in places of leadership. And we go into that. And if you wrestle with that, then here's the big one that settles it forever with me. Jesus launches Mary, the victorious risen Lord launches Mary into a prophetic preaching, teaching ministry when he says, now you go and tell the brothers. So we can never think that God, there's no male or female in Christ Jesus. No. Come on, people. Let's shake this lie of the enemy off and champion and cheer on our women. So in that devotional, you, we, we unpack biblically why it's in the certainty of sonship we can and should and the blessing involved in cheering on women. Because when God made us in his image, male and female, he made them. So even as a men's ministry with a focus of empowering men, one of our core values is championing, cheering on, encouraging and empowering women because we are at our most complete and our greatest reflection of Jesus. When men are moving in their callings, women are moving in their callings. And I think it's great when women feel to be youth pastors, but they can do a whole lot more than watch over the nursery at the church. I've seen it. And anybody who is challenged by that, I get it. But I'll tell you, this devotional, that chapter will help unlock it. But I'll also say this with great love. Read Lauren Cunningham's Why Not Women. He goes into much greater detail and it'll help sort and solve this lie of the enemy that's gotten in that women can do this and not that. It's yeah. just a lie. Yeah, it really is. It it's so powerful. I remember my kids when my kids were in high school, um they're they're two years apart. Robert and they had their Bible teacher had this debate on whether women could be preachers, pastors, ministers in the church besides, and, and he actually went to a denomination that believed that. So here are my kids. First, my son, who's the oldest one is in there and he forgot. So he's texting me at home and I'm texting him and he wins the debate wow. because he's one of two kids, his other best friend. And he's just like, you do know what my mom does, right? Like you do know my mom is a, a woman pastor, minister, preacher. She travels. And so he's like, okay, well then you'll take this side. Okay. He shut down the debate because my son was winning him and his friend took on the whole class and they were winning when my daughter came that same day to do it and she had prepared she's like mom he wouldn't let us do it <laughs> and i said because you were in the class because mm -hmm. because when you're presented with the truth when you're presented with the truth of the scripture that's right there you cannot deny what right. god is doing so robert thank you so much thank you so much for writing 31 decrees of blessing for men thank you for letting me know that patricia has one for women i'm going yep. to get that one um and um i wanted to also ask you can you just kind of tell us what is heroes arise broadcast what is it um and what can we expect and where can we find find you um to listen to that yeah sure the easiest way to find me is roberthodgkin.com heroes arise is our streaming media vo uh, vidcast and podcast we put one out every week we've um um and you can get all of them from my robert hodgkin youtube channel they're all free there's hundreds of hours of them at this point if you like podcasts like i do and you prefer to listen to things um and most of the major podcast platforms i think it's on eight major podcast platforms just search for heroes arise with Robert Hodgkin will come up. And I think we started the podcast version about halfway in. So while there's like 200 vidcasts, I think there's well over 100 podcasts. Um, but all of that can be reached through roberthodgkin.com. Uh, I've got a resource page where you can see my latest resources and I'll connect you to our online store. But uh, yeah, roberthodgkin.com is the easiest place to get all the stuff. Most of what we do is for free. We have partners that help make that possible, but we try to get as much out there as possible. And roberthodgkin.com com is a place that you can connect with us as a partner too if you want to perfect and i'll have that link in the show notes too and then um for uh, men on the front line they can find information on your website about that as well and really this is going to make a great graduation gift it's going to make a great father's day gift and actually 
you could go surprise your wife's men and get her one while she's right. getting you one. And then it's just like, you know, a wonderful gift all the way around. Well, Robert, thank you again for joining us on another podcast episode. I love having you um, as a guest. Um, I don't like, I'm just going to leave it open to you. How would you like to, do you want to declare? Do you want to decree? Do you want to pray? What's God put on your heart? You know, Holy Spirit was just stirring me the, to share a testimony. Is that all right? That's, that is okay. great. I want to share a testimony about this book to encourage you because um, my wife is in medical ministry. She's a brilliant scientist and doctor, and she's a lover of Jesus Christ, and he's given her an incredible mind, and she helps so many people with maladies that nobody can figure out how to solve. But she's also, she loves Jesus and our ministry. So whenever I have books, she always has them in her office and she's giving them away. She had a patient who she'd worked with for years who'd become a dear friend. And um, her patient saw this book on my wife's desk, 31 Decrees of Blessing for Men. And her, her friend said to her, oh, my brother needs that book, but he's nowhere near God. He'd never read it. He'd never decree it. So Yuri and her wisdom said, well, here, take one. Make the decrees on his behalf. I can do that? She said, yeah, the word of God works. Whether he says it or you says, here's what was so cool. She went through one month, 31 days, and every day did one decree on behalf of her brother. The next time she came in to see my wife, she said, Dr. Uri, my brother's a different person. He's walking with the Lord. He's completely transformed. And Uri said, that's what God's word does. So even if somebody's listening or watching and saying, oh, my son, my husband, my neighbor, my whoever needs that, but they never read it. I want to encourage you read it, declare it on their behalf. The word of God works. And these are tools to remind men who they truly are and what they've been blessed with. And you can stand in the gap for them and intercede and make these decrees on their behalf. It works. So I encourage you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for the faith in the power of his word for you watching. And my heart goes out. I can feel some guys right now who are like, I, I want to be more on fire with God. I'd like to be excited about what he's talking about, but I'm not. I want to tell you that the power of the word works. And even you saying, I want to be more on fire. That's the indication that God's going to meet you there. Use these decrees um, for anybody watching who wants to grow in the revelation of the certainty of sonship and the love of the father for them. This is here for you. But Holy Spirit, way more than this book you're there for them. And I ask you right now to draw them in, wrap your arms around them and draw them into the father's heart, root them and ground them in the certainty of sonship, remind them of their great worth and value in your eyes and how loved and accepted they are. Every son, every daughter listening, root them and ground them in the certainty of your love and relationship, and then launch them out from that to be your difference makers and solution bringers in the earth. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Well, Robert, thank you again for joining me. Thank you for being you and equipping us and challenging us and releasing us into all that God has for us. So thank you. Thank you, my friend. I love when I get to spend time with you. Hey, uh, feeling is mutual. So thank you again for listening to Dare to Hear the podcast where we encourage you to dare to hear the voice of God. I'm Debbie Kitterman. Thanks for listening today. If you've been blessed at all in any way, we ask that you do a couple of things like subscribe and share. Most importantly, share, share, share so we can get this message out about Robert and his book 31 decrees of blessings for men. And then also go get the one from Patricia King on women because her books are amazing as well. And I look forward to having you join me next week on another episode. Until then, God bless and goodbye. Follow